Okay, so you know the area of a circle is pi r squared. How can you use calculus to prove this? Well, we have a circle drawn here, and uh, we have a coordinate system, x and y, has a radius of r, and what we're gonna be doing is adding up all these infinitesimally small rectangles uh, in one quadrant and timesing that value by four um, to hopefully get the total area of the circle. And so uh, this point right here, we're calling uh, zero comma r, uh, has a radius of r, right? This is x, y, Cartesian coordinate system. And essentially what we're doing is we're just summing, going to sum up these infinitesimally small uh, rectangles in terms of their height. They're going to have a height of dy and a width of x, right? And so the area is just going to be four times the integral from zero to r. We're going from zero to r in terms of the y uh, times of x times dy. That's the area of each little rectangle. And so now we need x um, in terms of y. And so we know the area, uh, the formula for a circle is x squared minus plus y squared equals uh, r squared. And so we're solving for x. That gets you uh, x is the square root of r squared minus y squared. And so now we can plug that in. Uh, for x here, and so we're going to get the integral from 0 to r times 4 of square root r squared minus y squared times dy. And now just using an online integral solver, we can evaluate this, and this integral turns out to be pretty complicated looking. It's 1 half uh, y times r squared y squared plus one half uh, r squared times the tangent inverse, okay, of uh, y over r squared minus y squared. And so now we can just plug in these values here. So this is going to be four times a large expression, uh, one half plugging in uh, r for y r squared minus r squared, that's going to end up being zero, tan inverse uh, r, again r squared minus r squared, that denominator is going to be equal to zero, um, and then minus the same expression with zero plugged in, right, so it's going to be a zero here, r squared minus zero squared, plus one half r squared tan inverse. Um, now a zero in the denominator for y and r squared minus zero squared. And so if we look at all this, well, what do we have? Here we have a zero, so this term goes away. Here we don't have a zero, we have uh, one half r squared times the tan inverse of r over zero, right? So I'm going to write that down. One half r squared tan inverse r equals uh, r divided by zero. Okay, it's looking a little weird. This part has a zero, so that's going to go away. One half times zero. And this part has uh, one half r squared. This is r squared minus zero squared, square root of that, that's just r. So it's tan inverse, but it's zero over r, right? Zero over r. So it's tan inverse of basically zero, okay, or zero over r. So um, tan inverse means tangent of what, right? So uh, tangent of what equals zero, the tangent of zero equals zero. So this whole term goes away. But now the tangent of what equals infinity, essentially, undefined, uh, and the first solution to that is pi over 2. And so you're going to end up with 4 times, uh, this is an r here, 4 times 1 half r squared times pi over 2. And you can see that 4 times a half is 2, 2 times a half is 1, and so that gets you your area is pi r squared.
So again, uh, of course, we already knew that, but it's pretty cool to see uh, calculus get the right answer here. 